Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the SEER seminar. So this interactive online event is organized by the SEER project, and our main aim and focus for today will be to discuss and explore how we can equip teachers and education for implementing effectively STEAM teaching and learning. Before we start with our interesting keynote, uh, our different speakers and all our discussions, let's do a little bit of um, housekeeping. So first of all, the seminar is being uh, recorded. So after the recording is going to be made available to the public, along with a, a small article that is going to explain the main highlights of what we have discussed today. And also a little task for you before we start is to please sign the online signature list. I will give you a few seconds, but you can do it throughout the um, uh, seminar. Now, when it comes to the agenda, we have a quite uh, full uh, afternoon. So we're going to start with a small introduction about the CR project from my side. Then we're going to move on to our keynote address. And then we have two more, two more presentation of different findings of the CR project. And then we're going to move on to different discussions. We have two different opportunities uh, to exchange with you, but we also have a very interesting roundtable with uh, representatives from three different Erasmus Plus teachers academies. So let's get things started. So starting with uh, a small introduction about the CR, the CR is a Horizon Europe funded project. We started almost one and a half years ago. And our consortium is a quite interesting one, quite powerful one, and it's been composed by uh, different partners that combine education, research, policy and industry um, expertise. Now, when it comes to the objectives of this year, in general terms, our main aim is to support STEAM education in Europe by creating the adequate circumstances for its mainstreaming based on research and uh, evidence. And all our findings are going to be consolidated in a, a set of uh, roadmaps for different stakeholders and also a solid set of recommendations for policy uh, improvements. So everything that we are talking about, everything that we are doing is related to STEAM. Usually, um, and probably that's something that you can identify with from your experience, when we are talking about uh, STEAM, the A usually stands for arts. Within the CR, though, our definition is very much um, broader. Um, in uh, STEAM, the way we use it within the SEER, uh, when we are talking about um, uh, STEAM, we are using uh, two different STEM subjects, which are combined uh, with at least one, it, it can be more, non-STEM subjects. And when we are talking about non-STEM uh, uh, subjects, our definition is quite broad. These non-STEM subjects include arts, humanities, sports, pretty much everything, literature, psychology, anything that basically that you can think of. So with this and having a, ki a kind of solid basis of what we are talking about when we are talking about uh, STEAM, it is time for us to move on to our keynote. And we're very happy to have with us this afternoon, Monica Kepe Holmberg, the head of unit at DG Education, Youth, Sport and Culture from European Commission. Monica, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Edith, and thank you, dear participants, uh, dear friends uh, of STEM education. It's really a great pleasure to me to be here, to be with you today at this webinar organized uh, by the Horizon uh, Europe Project uh, STEER, so the STEM Education uh, European Roadmap. And I also would like to welcome uh, the participants uh, on behalf of the European Commission. I was actually very happy to uh, to come here today also because uh, this is uh, a project that is really very interesting for us. You are setting a very ambitious goal because you are trying to create a roadmap towards a widespread implementation of uh, STEM education in Europe. And as you also just explained, STEM with the A in the brackets. And uh, you also aim to answer the, the question how the innovative uh, STEM or STEAM pedagogy can uh, find its way into the classrooms. And uh, this uh, integrated uh, STEAM education is really very important. This is something that uh, we are still exploring together. And this is uh, something that is explored in research and practice, uh, also uh, showing uh, its uh, added value. 
because as you also just mentioned now in the introduction, it connects uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematic disciplines with something else, with uh, what I would call also society and real life. And uh, when we manage to do this, this makes the learning experience so much more meaningful and more engaging for the diverse groups of learners. I think a key word in your discussion today will be interdisciplinarity, because we also see interdisciplinarity very much as a response to the ever increasing complexity, ambiguity, uncertainty of the modern world. And interdisciplinarity is also expected to play a role when we address the challenges that we face in STEM education in Europe today. We have several challenges, but I just wanted to mention three here. One of the challenges is the growing downward trend in mathematics and science performance among the younger generation, among the 15 year olds. This is what we have seen also confirmed by the last uh, PISA assessment, and the results were published uh, in December last year. And adding to that, with the, the very worrying trend that socioeconomic background is still the main predictor of school success. Without giving here too many numbers, I think just for us to see that uh, one in uh, three underperforming, one in three or 15 year olds underperforming mathematics, one in four underperforming science, it's really very worrying. And as I mentioned, when we look at the socioeconomic background, when we see that every second is underperforming, then we really have a big challenge. So this would be, I would say, the first challenge. The second one is the persistent gender and diversity gap when it comes to STEM studies, but also STEM careers. And last but not least, when uh, we have the teacher shortages, when it comes to STEM teachers, teacher shortages in STEM subjects is, is even higher and even more worrying. So we know the challenges, and yet the question of how still poses a challenge because science disciplines are taught as separate subjects at secondary schools in most of the EU countries. At least this is also one of the findings we have seen in a recent uh, report uh, published by UDDC. So in other words, uh, schools in Europe are not prepared yet to implement the integrated STEM STEAM education in a systemic way. Also because here we believe uh, this requires rethinking almost everything that we do when it comes to STEM education. We need to rethink the curricular design. We need to rethink learning environments, how we assess the learning outcomes. And most importantly, we need to rethink teachers' role and the competencies teachers lead. So this as you see, requires really rethinking and reshaping our education systems in a more strategic, coordinated, top-down and bottom-up effort. Teachers, I mentioned uh, and the teacher, importance of teachers' rules and teacher competencies. Teachers are at the heart of such transformation because also without competent, motivated, well-equipped teachers, we cannot have quality education for all. This is why uh, we highlighted uh, in several recent policy documents also the importance of the teaching profession, investing in the teaching profession, increasing this, its attractiveness, creating opportunities for constantly raising their competencies, qualifications. This is very much at the heart of the European education area. It's at the heart of the European education area cooperation framework. And this is why uh, it's really great that you are going to showcase uh, what we are doing in the Erasmus Plus Teacher Academies. This is a relatively new initiative. I would say it's a flagship initiative of the European education area, but also a flagship action of our Erasmus Plus program. And to date, we have uh, in total 27 teacher academy projects. 27 projects have started. Our initial plan was to have uh, 25 uh, Erasmus Plus teacher academies by 2025. Our aim is to have an additional around 15 projects uh, after the selection that is uh, soon starting after the 2024 call, which is uh, closing now in uh, June. So these teacher academies are <clears throat> really very important projects for us. All of them cater to the needs voiced by the teachers themselves. And I'm very happy to see that you are going to present today or the, the 
some teacher academies, I understand three teacher academies have been invited <coughs> today and they are going to focus on the STEAM education and STEM teachers in the, your discussion round. And I think I've seen correctly on your initial slide also these uh, teacher academies at the SPICE, the Special Education STEAM Academy that promotes uh, inclusive uh, STEAM instructions in primary special education. Then uh, the IC SC Academy Pro STEM, which fosters European collaboration and mobility of STEM teachers, and the STEAM, the Teacher Facilitators Academy that provides many resources for STEAM teachers. So all of these projects uh, are large-scale cooperation projects involving partners from several countries across Europe. And uh, really very important <coughs> in, in our discussions, as I say, when it comes to STEM education. They are important also because we see them as initiatives uh, and not just uh, initiatives, but also I, I would say really policy laboratories, which can help not only to build European networks between teacher education and training in stakeholders, but also increase the impact and the scale of innovative pedagogies when it comes to STEM education. From this, I think you can already hear that we have really high expectations on our teacher academies work also to shape uh, the EU policies in the years to come. For this reason, we are really looking forward to hearing more about the results of the seminar today and also your bigger STEER project as such. They help us to answer the question of what we can do at European level to support innovative STEM teaching and learning in Europe. Let me close by wishing you many inspiring encounters, interesting exchanges during the seminar today, and wish you all the best also for your future work in this very important subject. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Monica, for your uh, for your input. Um, I would also like to to highlight that it was very interesting how you laid out the main challenges for us. It's also a, it's always a good uh, reminder uh, to be to know that we have still the gender and diversity issues that we need to address, the teacher shortage, the underperformance of the 15-year-olds that we have seen in the in the PISA results, and this is exactly where we believe that um, STEAM education, but also the work that is been currently done within the academy has a, has a lot to contribute. So we're looking forward to learn more from the three academies we have with us uh, today. But now that we know that there are 24 more, we will also keep like a, a close eye on, on those and follow their developments and establish some kind of collaboration. So thank you very much. Good. So with the foundation uh, set, uh, thanks to Monica, we are now going to move on to our first set of uh, findings. So we have with us Natalia Spiropoulou from the Hellenic Open University, who is going to present the result of the SEER teacher survey, which based, basically aimed to understand the uh, needs of teachers when it comes to STEAM education. Natalia, please take control. Just a minute, because <laughs> okay. Do you want me to move the slides for you? You are also muted, Natalia. Um, for some reason, I don't have again the the button to have. No the... worries. I, w I will move them for you. OK, great. Thank you. Thank you, Vita. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We will present the results for our recent survey on educators needs regarding STEAM education. Our objective of this survey were to investigate the attitude of educators towards um, STEAM education right now and also to determine the needs for preparing, developing, implementing, and collaborating needs for the implementation of STEAM education programs, and also the needs of uh, policymakers regarding education policies to enhance STEAM education, uh, and also to explore educators' needs for support and collaboration from industry and other organizations to share STEAM education. 
Um, our survey was broad, engaging more than 560 teachers from 29 countries. Uh, the majority of the responders work in public schools or organizations. Most of the participants teach at the secondary and primary educational levels, highlighting a significant focus on these critical stages of education. Uh, next. Next slide. OK, thank you. Uh, this here we have an overview of the subject areas that our survey responders specialize in. Uh, the key takeaway here is that we have a, a well-rounded sample representing diverse subject expertise. Uh, this includes significant participation from educators in natural sciences, technology and computer science and engineering and mathematics, but also from the, all the other subjects of A, which are social sciences, arts, music, theater, and uh, uh, physical education teachers as well. Uh, so going forward to the first category, which is the teacher's attitudes, we have to say that based on the key categories about um, uh, the questions that we had, we have uh, uh, seen that there is a high desire to apply STEM education. Most educators uh, provide the willingness to uh, implement STEM education. However, specific statements regarding their confidence that they have the appropriate tools to implement STEM education was in a lower uh, rate. Uh, also, uh, the majority of educators emphasize the benefits uh, that STEAM education could provide, especially in enhancing creativity and critical thinking of students. And uh, uh, we had some neutral uh, rates regarding the responses about how well STEAM education addresses individual students' differences. They were unsure if and how they could uh, do STEAM education in order to be available for students. Um, going forward, uh, we had some specific uh, uh, categories uh, regarding the different needs that educators could need, and here we have some uh, top rated, high rated needs. Uh, we have categorized them in five different uh, uh, themes. The first one is the resources and support needs. Uh, financial support, of course, it was a high need for adequate funding. Uh, they need uh, um, preparation, uh, time for preparation and resources in order to um, use STEAM education and also how to use technology. And also there is a need for time for uh, collaboration with other teachers and before the uh, educational programs in order to prepare all the activities that they should uh, implement. Regarding the curriculum and instruction, uh, uh, teachers said that there is a need to have and to establish a culture for STEAM education and to understand the principles of STEAM education approach uh, provide and also uh, to understand different content knowledge that different educators need to know. Uh, also, the uh, strategies, the effective strategies that uh, usually um, are uh, used uh, during STEAM education programs uh, and how uh, uh, this could be used by different educators. Uh, professional collaboration and community involvement, which is again the the time and the opportunities that teachers need in order to collaborate with other teachers, and also the engagement of the community, not only inside the schools but outside the schools, uh, including parents, local community, or even industry. Uh, then we have the classroom and instructional management. The class size and the instructional time was also something that was um, a need that educators provided the need that they need. They need more manageable class sizes and also more instructional time in order to implement projects within STEAM education approach. 
And also they ask for specific feedback and assessment methods in order to assess a STEAM project. Finally, we have the professional development uh, theme, which says that they need uh, some examples, some guides regarding lesson plans, specific activities, um, also some uh, classroom management organization and management need in order to uh, also include the inclusion and diversity. Uh, and uh, next, uh, we can uh, continue with the next slide, where we had also some open-ended questions regarding the needs, where some teachers provided some deeper insights into the specific needs that we already had, but also we have revealed some several critical additional areas. Uh, firstly, firstly, there is a significant concern about the resources and infrastructure, Educators uh, highlighted the lack of modern facilities, which are essential for effective STEAM education. And also uh, there is a need for a specific environment in order to have STEAM labs, for example. And uh, of course, again, the increased financial support in order to be able to have uh, educational resources and technology for the STEAM education programs. In terms of curriculum and assessment, responders provided uh, here are some specific proposals regarding uh, the shift uh, towards a more project-based or peer assessment techniques instead of a traditional um, assessment methods in uh, STEAM education. And also they stressed about the importance of regular curriculum updates and effective feedback mechanisms to ensure continuous improvement and relevance uh, based on the changes that uh, the STEAM education provide. Here we have some additional information about the culture and the systematic changes that uh, it was another prominent theme here. Educators noted that um, the challenge of, of overcoming resistance to change within their institution and also they emphasized the need for fostering a culture of continuous improvement. Uh, they also called for a cultural shift within the education system in order to enhance efficiency. And also uh, another important aspect, it was the public awareness regarding the benefits and what is STEAM education, uh, especially for parents in order to have a broader support to use this approach. Finally, here again, we see the inclusivity and accessibility. It was highlighted again as a crucial factor, even though we didn't have so many teachers in special education expertise, they are concerned about how they could uh, implement STEM education in order to be accessible for all, um, regardless their background or abilities. And um, uh, it was highlighted as a crucial factor. Uh, OK, we can continue next. Uh, the next category was uh, specifically uh, provided regarding the needs uh, of educators from policymakers. At first, we tried to explore the current engagement on how schools and organizations facilitate professional communication and collaboration opportunities related to STEM education. Here we can see a mixed landscape of professional communication and collaboration among educators in STEAM education. While many educators demonstrate moderate to strong engagement, uh, there is a notable gap where many educators report minimal to no collaboration. So uh, going next to the specific needs that teachers uh, propose in order to uh, policymakers and um, uh, could support the development and implementation of STEM education. Uh, we have some uh, high priority needs, which is the predefined and well designed lesson plans and specific education activities, some clear instructional strategies and guidelines in order to, um, to have some to have a guidance how to implement STEAM education. 
and also the significant need to uh, to have some professional development on how to integrate all subjects into STEM education and for the establishment of clear assessment criteria here as well. Uh, now, regarding the needs for organizational changes uh, at school level to support STEM education programs, uh, our uh, survey responders, our educators, identify as highly perceived needs uh, to uh, ensure adequate infrastructure, providing here time for uh, teachers to collaborate, limiting the number of students in a STEAM classroom, and also allocated a uh, sufficient time for implementation. Uh, additionally, there is also um, moderate to high needs for implementing co-teaching in interdisciplinary projects and incorporating core disciplinary activities within single lessons. And uh, finally, uh, we have uh, research, so we can go to the next slide, and we have research about the relationship of educators in different organizations and industries and uh, their needs. At first, again, we tried to understand the current uh, engagement and how, um, at what extent do business and industry partners support STEAM education in their schools and organizations. Um, the data reveals um, a minimal engagement for business and industry partners for most of the uh, educators, where half of the institutions receive no support and only a small number of uh, educators uh, provided that they had significant of extensive support with a clear need for increased collaboration between education institutions and industry. And regarding some specific uh, needs and supports, uh, the next slide, we have some primary need identified by our survey, which is the financial support for schools to implement STEM education, uh, also the teaching resources and tools and some professional development with opportunities through industry partnerships. We have to say here that uh, we had some varieties regarding the different expertise of uh, educators. For example, technology and engineering teachers along with art teachers had a great interest in professional development and, with collab and collaboration with industries. Uh, instead of the other teachers, or for example, social science teachers um, indicate significantly less need for financial support from industry. Uh, generally, generally, the differences in needs are not uh, significant between different levels of education, but are more pronounced across different uh, fields of educators. And these uh, insights highlight the different needs across, across disciplines and emphasize the importance of tailored support and uh, the tailored uh, professional development of educators in order to effectively enhance uh, STEAM education. Uh, this is a really <laughs> a quick short overview of the results. Thank you very much, Natalia, for this detailed overview of these very rich results. Now, building on those results, we're going to shift to a broader perspective. So we have with us Oliver Strasser from the Head of Research and Design from the International Center for STEM Education, uh, ICSE. So, Oliver, the floor is yours. You can take control. So, thank you very much. Um, just working with the technology. So um, let me walk you through our work we did in this project. So we aim to understand the uh, STEAM educational landscape in Europe and how it's impact the national, uh, how it's impact and is reflected in national STEM education. And <clears throat> we had basically um, three things to do, or we did already three things, and I will give you a short overview what uh, I'm going to present you in a moment. So um, the first thing we did was a um, very basic um, literature review to understand the, the diversity of definitions of STEM education. I will not go directly into this because this was presented, um, as I uh, noted, uh, for, uh, um, 
sometime before or in the meeting before. So I will go more in the practical um, things we did um, regarding STEAM education and its implementation across Europe and in some European countries. So, as you can read, our primary goal was really to get, get to get the picture what happens in international STEM initiatives, what happens uh, nationally in STEM initiatives, what are the major trends internationally and nationally, and how um, how are, are they reflected in each other, are there differences, and especially are there some gaps between we we could address. The we had also some further. Um, research questions we will try to understand, but I will go to into this in a, in a few more minutes. So what did we do? Um, besides from trying to understand what the basic definitions of STEM education or STEAM educations are, and we tried to understand what happens on a research side. So what do STEAM educators, uh, where do they focus their research on? And what we really wanted to understand is uh, we wanted at first to understand what happens in STEM initiatives. So you know there are several different funding programs from the, from the European Union as Erasmus Plus or Horizon, and they often um, fund some STEM initiatives that improve STEM education or STEAM education in Europe. And what we did is we focused on the Scientex repository. This is a very large repository of STEAM initiatives, and we did a content analysis of all those projects. Um, there are 750, 770 projects already um, analyzed, and there came also in the recent uh, weeks 50 more. So we have now approximately 800 um, uh, STEM initiatives. We analyzed and we tried to identify the gap, uh, the main trends, the main gaps, and in general, we um, investigated what is the, what are is the major uh, output of this. So. I cannot go into too much detail. I would like to present you a lot of graphs, but let me summarize the main outcomes. So the first thing is those STEM initiatives in Europe mainly focus on teachers and students. This looks like a trivial um, outcome, but it's I, actually it's not. My, uh, there are also STEM initiatives that focus on researchers. They are focusing on industry and especially about uh, on the collaboration. So the seventy the seventy percent of all um, target groups are teachers and students is a very interesting thing. It means it's very practical oriented. It is also reflected in the second point that 50% of all projects produce open access teaching or learning materials. So meaning there must be a broad knowledge and broad, uh, um, a very big content of STEAM education um, in these initiatives, and they should be accessible somehow. However, this is really not the case, or it's less the case than it should be. Um, if you come to sustainability of some projects, these projects produce in, in general some web pages, and then they produce their outcomes on these web pages. And 25% of all outputs are not available anymore. In general, three years is the um, is the three years after a project end. Uh, projects be begin to tend to vanish from the web. So the results they produced are not accessible anymore. It's it's very sad because we think there is a really big knowledge and really big expertise which should be accessible, and it is not. The second part, uh, second results are very, very, um, very interesting. Also, there is a clear focus on integrated STEM or STEAM education, meaning this interdisciplinary um, approach is well present in European STEAM initiatives. So the most pro um, projects focus on some interdisciplinary project uh, um, problems. The terminology integrated STEM or STEAM is not as much as decimated as it could be, especially um, STEAM is not so popular as it could be. But there was a clear rise in the recent years, so STEAM education uh, became more popular in STEM, in STEAM initiatives or STEM initiatives. But what, it, uh, pro what is understood on STEAM is not clear, depends on the project. Also, STEM or integrated STEM or STEAM uh, projects, so also interdisciplinary projects, focus much more on inquiry-based learning, design-based learning, or project-based learning. So this 
type of education which is considered to be very, very effective in interdisciplinary scenarios. What is really interesting is that the main, or it's it's not so not, not so um, astonishing, but very interesting is that sustainability and environmental issues, digitalization and gender diversity, as well as STEM careers, are the main topics which are uh, which the initiatives focus on. But what is what is for me what's really astonishing is that diversity, with except of gender diversity, is very rare. Also, inclusion and special education are not very dominant um, topics. However, there was a clear rise of inclusion and special education in 2016 and 2022, which um, are reflected, uh, which reflect some political. Um, um, so I'm sorry, uh, this was reflected in politics with the refugee crisis in Europe and the conflict in the Ukraine. So we assume that this is correlated to that. And also a, a point which is astonishing for us is that impact research is rarely done in European initiatives. Usually um, Erasmus Plus or Horizon projects do not really require impact research in such STEM initiatives. So it, it's maybe a problem which is, um, which that is, so, so I'm sorry, <laughs> what's long there today? So the, the point is, Usually it's not required to do such research, but we cannot see the impact of these initiatives when we do when we don't do any impact research. So we think it could it should be uh, much more included in proposals or in calls that impact research should be systematically integrated in STEAM initiatives. Without that, we do not know what the impact of a project is. Okay, this was the international perspective. So there is much more to tell, and I encourage you to read the report, the deliverable one point one. There are a lot of graphs, and then you can see how those trends evolved um, over the years. And there are also a lot of cross tables, so you can see independent independence of the target group, how these trends evolved. However, we are also wanted to understand what happens nationally. So there are mm, there are or there are not national um, platforms of STEM initiatives, but we were not able to access them in every country. So we decided to do a qualitative approach. We interviewed, at least with a qualitative questionnaire, policy drivers in several European countries. We um, sent it to eight different European countries and we asked them, what is the situation of STEM education in your country? What are prominent um, STEM initiatives and what are the trends there and how relevant are European STEM initiatives on the national level. So the, the, answer is a, the answer was very, very clear. STEM and STEAM are hot topics in every European country we, we investigated. There are policies in almost every European country and they are very dominant. STEAM is less dominant than STEM, but anyway, there, there are their STEM is really important for the most of countries is because there is a lack of um, STEM workers, a lack of STEM teachers. Anyway, they have all the reasons STEM is highly funded in every country. However, it, uh, there are no structural or, or no really structural support for teachers to um, teach STEM. So they have to include their STEM teaching in their normal teaching. So this interdisciplinary approach where you maybe need the expertise of two or more teachers is not really supported or rea rarely supported. And also the policy drivers really explicitly complained about that. They said, yeah, there are some initiatives to support that, but the, in, in general, this is, um, they do not have the possibilities or the, the support to do really interdisciplinary STEM teaching. Yeah, and what is also important, trends of national and international STEM initiatives mainly overlap depending on the country. There are some differences, but uh, things like digitalization, health, um, inclusion, um, and the diversity are hot topics in all those countries. However, also uh, the STEM experts noted that inclusion and diversity could be much more enlarged uh, in each country or much more integrated in their education in each country. So the last thing I would like to tell you is 
all countries said European STEM initiatives are very important, but they said they do not have any evidence of their impact on the national policy level. Or rarely, they think it's important, they think they made their way into policy, but they could not provide any evidence of that, which for us says we could improve the situation, um, the communication of people who are doing European initiatives with policymakers could improve their cooperation, at least to some extent. So I, I was talking very fast, I'm <laughs> um, sorry. So I'm not sure, Evita, how you do it, uh, questions in the end or? Uh, we're going to have the discussion, so any kind of questions that are going to arise now. So thank you very much, Oliver. You did great in terms of uh, time. No worry at all. Let me take the control back. So, okay, so now that we have explored in detail the findings from both the survey and also the mapping activities that we have just heard, now it's time to hear your thoughts and your own uh, experiences. So, first of all, um, we have um, we have split it a little bit in, in two in order to give you some structure. So we would like to hear from you your examples of uh, impactful best practice STEAM courses for educators that you have been exposed to, you have attended or you are aware of. And also we would like to hear in your opinion what constitutes best practice for STEAM training. So what, what are the key elements that a STEAM course for education should ideally um, include? So feel free to raise your hand. We have a little bit of time to hear from two or three of you and we will also um, you can see it now actually in the chat Eddie has just posted it so we have um, a pad padlet where we can collect uh, more uh, input and more feedback from uh, more of you it would be impossible to hear 150 people although we would love to so let's take it from there and when you raise your hand and I give you the floor you can also turn on your camera so we can see each other so who wants to start so any interesting experiences, any interesting examples of uh, best practices of good STEAM uh, courses for educators that uh, are available in your country or that you have attended or you are aware of? Is there anyone who wants to make a start? I see Sarah has raised her hand. Hi, Sarah. Please go ahead. Good morning. If anyone wants to start, if no one is ready to start, I can <laughs> give you my experience. Um, I am one of the ENOUGH Institute of uh, Astrophysical in, in Italy. Uh, I'm one of ENOUGH Outreach and Didactics uh, um, people, I would say. And I have assisted since I was the one who created the escape room for one of these uh, schools. I'm assisting at the Starlight program, which is a project that is um, giving birth, I would say, in Italy and internationally in, through an Erasmus Plus to um, astro, astro tourism operators. Uh, and it's about um, light pollution and um, giving value to all the biological and, uh, you know, nature consequences of the light pollution. So um, it, it is a very good program, a very good project uh, that ENOUGH is doing with other partners around Europe. It's an Erasmus Plus and it's very good. Um, also, I would say ESA is doing a great job uh because we have all those programs like um the space competition which i won with two students uh enough too is starting with is beginning to do programs with edu enough is beginning to do com competitions uh which my students want to actually uh about uh giving uh, um we start, this year it was starting from an um, Italian uh, writer, which is Italo Calvino, who wrote, who, who wrote um, a whole book of stories about um, the universe. Um, oh, let me put up 
put down my hand. Um, uh, and we started from the literature, from Italian literature. We went through the scientific matters. And then we created, uh, I'm oh, sorry, I'm a musician and a music teacher. And we went on uh, through the um, scientific uh, matters and we created our project as actually we were free. We were given some activities in, but we could also do something um, original. So we did uh, a whole bunch of things, but this was a very good um, uh, hint we received from these institutions and it was good. Uh, actually in Italy, we really miss the practical instruments and many, mm -hmm. many teachers are still very, uh, very um, against this kind of um, teaching practice not only not only in italy it's a, it's a general uh, phenomenon but thank you thank you for, for sharing these nice examples and also for bringing the astronomy aspect we have a lot of astronomy uh, fans i'm sure great mm -hmm. okay let's try yeah, we to need your, we need digitalization and your help absolutely right? absolutely absolutely we good okay let's move on to laura hello everybody can you hear me Yes, perfectly. Okay, so thank you very much for this opportunity to listen to the research results and to listen to your inquiries. I uh, I totally agree and I liked what Natalia presented and what uh, Dr. Oliver also told us. Um, and uh, what I wanted to say is that I'm... Oh, we are muted all of a sudden. I am also uh, very interested in promoting STEAM education and I'm also STEAM education educator uh, from my uh, position as a PhD uh, uh, researcher, so to say. And what we do um, here in uh, Yash, because we also had a survey uh, on the needs, on the challenges, on the problems of Romanian teachers, for example, and it matches very well with what that Natalia uh, told us about um, the needs of the other in the studies. So we work on preparing um, pre-service teachers or pro prospective teachers um, during their uh, in-service uh, training. So at the begin, well, um, tr university training, so that they generate, as um, Prof Dr. Oliver said, that we train, but we also generate some output. Mm -hmm. So it's like project-based learning. And my experience is that, yes, we do face some challenges also when preparing the teachers um, because of the lack of resources, but still um, we can generate uh, nice outputs, useful outputs, because the teachers uh, which are already there in schools, they have uh, tested the products which the students created, so uh, the, f the feedback is positive. Uh, anyways, uh, there is, yes, still a lack of uh, knowledge how to implement it. There is this limitation of the time schedule mm -hmm. of collaboration, uh, which is difficult to get to squeeze into, into these timetables. And of course, um, curriculum, they don't know how to uh, do it because uh, now it's like the syllabus, it's already established, so they have to follow that. But still, um, in Romania, for example, we have two weeks in the school year where teachers are allowed to make different kind of educational activities. They are not forced to um, follow the syllabus. So we can use that opportunity to propose to children and uh, to teachers um, exploring other kinds of uh, activities, which is also uh, a possibility for STEAM. Uh, so this is my personal experience with so we trained uh, more than 1,500 students in the last um, three years uh, and we keep on working and I'm glad that I had this opportunity to hear and uh, I will follow uh, and will be glad to collaborate also. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Laura. We're going to move on to our last contributor for now, so Gregory, uh, and I would like to encourage uh, the other people that they have your, their hands raised to please write in the Padlet. I think it is important that we have a few minutes of break before we move on to our roundtable. So let's hear it from Gregory and then we go on our break. Gregory? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good to see so many people interested in STEAM. Uh, of course, I uh, will be in the panel later for STEAM Academy. Just to mention that um, as part of the activities of, the, of our project, we have been uh, running since February until now, uh, a kind of a, a training program for, for, for teachers. This will lead to a micro-credential for STEAM uh, teacher facilitators. In this process, we help the teachers to work together, teachers of different professions. So we make groups of two or three teachers from different uh, uh, fields in order to help them design together as a project scenario. So we're talking about project-based learning. The, the lack of teachers is that they don't know how to cooperate. They don't know how to um, develop scenarios. We have uh, developed through a previous project, the STEAM project, the uh, a template called a learning and creativity plan. This is to replace what we call lesson plan. We be, we don't believe in lesson plans uh, anymore from, from the name point of view, because we don't do a lesson uh, when we do STEAM projects. We, we facilitate the learning and creativity of the students. So that's why we abandon the name lesson. So in this process, we have 34 teachers of different fields. We group them into and then the question, how do you implement? How do you implement with students? Because the, the, the law in the country where we apply this at the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute and the Cyprus Mathematical Society where we pilot this, yeah, you cannot change the curriculum unless you go to the parliament to change the method of teaching in school. So many of the activities of STEM are done in the afternoon. In order to give the opportunity for these teachers to complete, let's say, their micro credential because uh, micro-credential with no hands-on and competence and skills development and an application of the design scenario of the project with students does not make sense. So we give the opportunity to have hands-on with students of minimum six hours uh, in uh, students of the summer school that is organized in July. So from next Monday, these teachers will be working with students they will be monitored, we will measure impacts, etc., to teachers and to students. And uh, we will write a short report as a as a as a pilot, let's say, first uh, 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 reflection in order to base it, to base the design that we will make for the micro credential in the future. So we expect that the STEAM teachers will not be developed through academic program degrees. Uh, purely, but it would be probably through special uh, micro-credential programs. And this is what we're trying to do. We'll talk more about this later on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gregory. Many thanks to all. So we're going to take a short break to refresh, and we're going to be back at 2 o'clock for our roundtable discussion. So we see you in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back, everyone. And welcome to our roundtable discussion on the Erasmus Plus Teachers Academies. I realize that I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Evita Tasiopoulou from European Schoolnet, and I will continue moderating today's uh, session. So we are thrilled to have with us today um, three representatives from three quite different uh, and quite innovative teacher academies across uh, Europe, and we are looking forward to discussing with them the integration of STEAM education in the curriculum and learn more about the impact and the work of these uh, academies. So let's begin by introducing our panelists. So we have with us Achilles Kameas from SPICE, from the Hellenic Open University. I hope you can see him. Yes, we can see him. Hi, Achilles. We have hello. With... <laughs> hello, nice hello. <laughs> nice to see you again. We also have with us Maria Evagoru from ICSE Academy uh, from the University of uh, Cyprus. And we also have Gregory Macridis from the STEMI yes. Academy. Hello, everyone. The... Hello, hello, Gregory from the Pedagogical University of 
the Commission of National Education in Krakow. So to make a start, uh, I would like to invite our panelists to uh, introduce us a little bit to the work of uh, your academy. So give us a little bit of uh, background. We realize that you all do quite different and very interesting things. So let's start with uh, Achilles. Please tell us a bit more about SPICE Academy. Of course. Uh... Hi everyone and uh, thanks for the invitation. It's, uh, I'm really glad to, to be here and uh, um, representing the SPICE uh, project. SPICE uh, stands for Special Education STEAM Academy and uh, as you understand from the title, we focus on uh, including uh, people with special needs in uh, STEAM uh, classrooms. So it's a three-year uh, project uh, that uh, now is at the end of the second year. It was among the first uh, bands of uh, teacher academies that uh, have been funded. Uh, we address uh, primary school uh, uh, teachers and educators. And uh, well, the main objective of the, of the project is to promote inclusion. We see uh, STEAM uh, education as a vehicle to uh, arrive to more inclusive uh, classrooms in which uh, uh, students with uh, mild uh, disabilities uh, can be included and participate in uh, STEAM education activities. And to, to achieve this, uh, we have uh, uh, done quite some progress because there was nothing there for, for this uh, for this topic, actually. So we had to start actually uh, almost at, at zero from zero. Uh, we have developed uh, the STEAM Educators Competence Framework, uh, the inclusive STEAM Educators Competence Framework, in which we list uh, a set of uh, competencies uh, and uh, together with descriptive statements that uh, we think uh, that, uh, not we, the, the target, uh, our stakeholders think that uh, uh, STEAM educators should have so that they can manage um, inclusive uh, inclusive classrooms. Uh, there is also a companion uh, framework, the STEAM education framework, that uh, contains um, resources and uh, methods of uh, teaching in inclusive classrooms. Then we have collected, of course, uh, as many as um, good practices as we could find, and uh, and now we are uh, uh, finalizing the design of uh, a MOOC. Uh, course because this project is going to offer um, a three-stage uh, training to um, educators, primary education educators who are interested, pre-service and in-service who are interested to join us. Uh, the first stage is a MOOC that will start uh, in September, that will be available in September. Then we have a blended course uh, which will specialize on some of uh, the MOOC's uh, topics. And finally, we have mobilities for selected teachers that will visit the premises of, of the partners. Uh, just uh, to conclude, I wanted to say that uh, the MOOC is addressed to everybody. It's open. Uh, and it is based on the competence framework, so we uh, actually help uh, um, teachers to acquire these competencies and it is supported by uh, a community of uh, practice with um, STEAM educators and other educators who are interested, uh, where they can join and discuss uh, issues uh, of uh, inclusive STEAM education. So the takeaway message here is that we are aiming to, to, to go for an uh, an inclusive classroom in which STEAM education is the vehicle to achieve that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Achilles, and thank you very much for bringing up inclusivity so early in the discussion. Quite important and quite uh, neglected at the same time. I saw that Eddie has shared the link to the SPICE Academy, but if you have like more direct links or resources that you want us to, to share or you want to add them in the Padlet, please feel we free to We put them to, in the Padlet so. already, a bit, uh, uh, Fantastic, we fantastic. We can put them here as well. Thank you very no, much. No, no, that's good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So let's move on to Maria. Maria, are you going to tell us a bit more about the ICSA Academy? Yes, uh, thank you for, for the invitation as well. It's uh, It was really nice to um, listen to the findings um, in the presentations from the SEER project earlier on. I'm here representing the ICSI Academy. I am uh, uh, from the University of Nicosia in Cyprus, and I'm not the coordinator. The coordinator of the project is uh, Gadi Amas. Um, ICSI Academy was funded in 2022 in the first cycle of the teacher academies and is focusing on the EU partnership for pre and in service STEM teacher training. Um, we have 13 partners from higher education. We have 13 associated partners from STEM education, practice policy and field, other fields. And we also have 65 model schools participating in our consortium. And we aim to develop and test innovative modes of professional development in STEM 
both for free and foreign service teachers. And um, we focus on four main categories of activities in our ICSI Teacher Academy. We focus on what we call the European Workshop Series. We have completed two rounds of the European Workshop Series. Uh, one took place in uh, fall 2023 and the uh, last one is spring 2024, it was just completed. And in those European workshop series, we had four clusters um, on which we focused, and we focus on bo both pre and in service STEM teachers. So the first cluster had to do with trends in STEM education, inquiry based and transdisciplinary approaches, and sustainability. The second one had to do with diversity and inclusion. So here, we see a link with the SPICE Academy as well. The third one focused on STEM in a digital era, and we had some input, input on AI as well and how this influences STEM education in general. And the last one had to do with innovative assessment in STEM education disciplines. So we have finished with the European Workshop Series, and now we are evaluating what was developed, and we plan to present um, this training in, in a way that it's going to be open and accessible to all pre and service teachers. The other thing that we have engaged in are summer schools, again, with pre and service teachers. We had the first summer school last August in Utrecht, and the next one is starting in a couple of days in Prague, again, with an emphasis on the four different clusters that I have talked about that were part of the European workshop series as well. We also had something that was called job shadowing between the partners. In the job shadowing, we developed and tested um, effective and accessible and transferable models of professional development and we exchanged practices between the partners. So we observed other partners in the process of engaging in STEM education and then we tried to transfer some of these activities in our own practices and developed one case study per country, focusing on the impact that this has had on our own teaching in STEM education. And finally, we have also prepared uh, two policy briefs and two policy needs and analysis, and these are available on our website um, as well. And we plan to have the final, we also had to round policy tables, and we plan to have the final um, uh, policy table on May, ninth in Cyprus, along with our final conference. And uh, I will add in the Padlet the information about the conference as well for anyone who is interested. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Very, very interesting. The jobs are doing also the clusters that you guys are addressing. Uh, some, some, of, some of those are quite um, high on the agenda of this year and they're going to be quite prominent in the roadmap as well. So um, we're going to keep in touch and want to keep a, an eye uh, on your uh, results as well. Good. So moving on, Gregory, please, you're going to tell us a bit more about the STEMI Academy? Yes. Hi, hello, everyone. Um, our project is... Uh, is based on um, the project-based learning approach for STEME. So we have studied the lack and the needs of these teachers for the last 10 years through different projects. We are utilizing results from 16 different projects in this uh, academy project. Um, the, issue, the issue is that we uh, teachers need to know how to work together from different professions, how to design together scenarios of projects, how to implement them. So, uh, the, the project is developing a, a support system for creating a critical mass of uh, future STEM teachers, because if we want to change the education system, we need to have a critical mass of teachers. So without the teachers, we cannot change uh, the learning environments in schools, etc. So this is, a, this is the issue for us, and that's why in this project, we are also are developing and we have registered already the European Federation of STEM Teacher Facilitator Academies. And the platform that will, will be developed before the end of the project will be providing a training support and material ready to be used by future teachers uh, through these uh, regional academies. So we will be supporting the development of regional academies in Europe and beyond. And um, with this approach, we hope and we believe that is probably one of the ways to develop the so-called critical mass of STEM teachers. As we all know that there is no high uh, university degrees for STEM education. 
Uh, so we develop ping as a navigation program through micro credential that we will be uh, supporting the the in service uh, teachers, the the school service teachers, and of course the student teachers, those who are coming out of the university. So if a mathematician, physicist, chemist, biologist is coming out of the university, he will be able to be trained uh, towards a micro credential uh, STEM education. This is, as I mentioned earlier, is piloted because without hands-on an application uh, with students, it's not possible to be certified as a STEM teacher. And this is what we're trying to develop and make it as friendly as possible for future teachers to be trained. We have been developing already uh, 114 uh, learning and creativity plans, the, the new name for the lesson plans uh, we use. And um, this will be developed for two age groups, 10 to 14 and 14 to 18, and they will be available in nine different languages. Uh, this will be a tool in the hands of teachers, and we consider that no single teacher can be certified by himself. Certification can only occur if we have at least two teachers collaborating. So we will never accept a certification of a teacher uh, uh, as an individual, because it means he doesn't understand what is STEM education on a project-based learning. Project-based learning has to be a multidisciplinary, multi-science approach. At the same time, knowing the need of, uh, of the training for the teachers to be able to apply and use these learning and creative plans, we have developed based on a, uh, on a competence framework that is already published at the end of March, uh, for the uh, with 12 competences that these future STEM teachers need to have. We have developed 14 or developing 14 modules, which would be available also in the form of workshops and in the form of webinars. And we started piloting these uh, modules. We had the first pilot in April in Portugal. We will have the next one in January in uh, in uh, in Bucharest, and we will be accepting participants with uh, minor co-funding uh, to, 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 to participate. Parallel to this, we are started already with the development of the platform observatory where all these, all these resources will be sitting. And of course, the training certification will be available through this observatory. And, um, and we hope with the Federation to promote new members who are going to have the obligation to develop a regional uh, STEM academy using the, 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 the resources, but also creating their own resources in their own local language. So uh, our uh, we have annual conferences, but we the big conference will be in March 26. Uh, but the next March, we will be in Thessaloniki for uh, a, a STEM a, a small conference. The big conference will be in 26. And of course, we have many online events, uh, webinars, etc., that we invite all other STEM projects to participate and exchange their uh, ideas and resources. I'm very happy to see from the survey earlier that in the, all the elements that the survey was saying that we need to develop new things. We think we 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 are working towards that direction, and we hope uh, we produce something that would be useful for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gregory. And very very ambitious uh, academy, lots of uh, very useful resources. So now that you have, we have an idea of what uh, you are doing, of the richness of your work, let's uh, move on and let's. Uh, try to explore how your academies address the aspect of uh, integration. So as you have heard, so in now in the definition of STEAM that we are using, A is basically um, standing for all, so for all uh, subjects. So this is my first question. So how the integration of these all subjects is addressed within your academy? Maria, do you want to start? Yes, I can start. Um, okay, first of all, we are a STEM academy, not a STEAM academy, so uh, we don't really have the emphasis on, on the A in our academy, uh, but we try at least to integrate the other subjects. What we find is that it's not, um, it's not always easy to do the integration, and especially it's not easy to do the integration if you're working with um, secondary school teachers, because there you have the barriers between the subjects in the curriculum 
and it's not easy for the teachers to find the way to collaborate between them. What we are trying to do is to have at least two of working together with two of the subjects as a way to find a common ground um, in the curriculum between two specific subjects and in that way develop um, lessons or activities that can support the teachers to work together. Thank you, Maria. Gregory, what about your academy? Is there any integration going on? Well, yes, um, our academy uh, is based on integration because the STEAM for us means science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, and entrepreneurship. So we have the, the learning activity plan I mentioned earlier cannot be developed unless there are at least two uh, of the uh, STEAM subjects involved. Most of the learning activity plans involve at least three. And we already have many, many examples. Uh, as far as the arts part, of course, we develop in um, science theater, mathematics theater, involving language, communication, etc. And most of the projects have this uh, uh, entrepreneurial mindset uh, embedded because um, there is no project result. A project result, in a sense, has to be attractive for someone to use it, or for someone to invest in it, or someone to buy it. In, in in that sense, so we want to help the students become more creative and innovative. And uh, if if nobody is interested in a result of something you develop, or you create, then it can never be an innovation from our point of view. So uh, we want the students to start thinking in that direction. And as I said, we're not all working only on the school level, but working also at the university level. Our project. So we need to. To, to do this with the university students because the university students are professionals in their field and need to um, uh, act like professionals so they, they 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 have to understand seriously what innovation means. So we do multidisciplinary approaches in all the developments we do and we we work towards this direction to facilitate this uh, for the teachers to be able to work together. This is the this is a challenge we all know, but this is what we're trying to 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 support. Thank you very much, Gregory. So we see different uh, levels of uh, integration uh, across the academies. So what about you, Achilles? What about the Spice Academy? Well, uh, since we are partners in the CR project, we are following very closely <laughs> the, the this uh, debate on on integration, and uh, of course we agree with. Uh, with the, uh, the definition you presented earlier in our project, uh, well, we are focusing on educators, right? And uh, our main instrument is the competence framework. Well, in this framework, uh, we have uh, we represent, let's say, the educators uh, as having five distinct roles. So, uh, as a teacher and tutor, one role, then another one as a, um, a education designer and creator, then uh, as an orchestrator of education, as a community member, and as a a growing professional and in all of these um, areas let's say for which we have uh, identified competencies in all of these areas the um, the the idea of uh, uh, the, the spirit let's say of integrating uh, more than two uh, disciplines is uh, evident in the statements uh, we don't have a specific let's say it wouldn't make sense to have a specific confidence that competence that uh, uh, talks about integrate uh, that has integration in the title but in the statements that we use to describe the competencies, which one could say could be transformed into learning outcomes if you build a, a training course based on the competence framework, uh, integration is uh, is always there. Thank you very much, Achilles. Good. So we have seen these different aspects of integration. Again, how the definition of uh, integrated uh, teaching and learning comes into play, different interpretations, but still the, the, the core, we can say that it's still uh, uh, there. So um, moving on now more to the sufficiency and to the work that has been done in these teacher academies, we have heard already lots of resources, lots of initiatives, um, quite a, a production of quality material. Are these teacher academies is sufficient to overcome the lack of STEM, STEM education in the curriculum and also hearing all the work that you you guys are doing all the fantastic resources that you are producing do you think that there is anything more that can be done in order to capitalize more on the outcomes um, of the the different uh, academies 
Uh, let's start with Gregory. Well, um, the traditional curriculum of teaching and learning have to change, and they have to be adapted to the future needs of supporting the development of competence and skills. Uh, someone may not be talking about curricula anymore, but they may be talking about open curricula for the future. But uh, one way of doing this is to is for students. We're talking about school students and higher education students to be able to apply knowledge uh, through project based learning activities with the support of new technologies for further experiential learning. Uh, that's why we need to bring in the virtual reality, augmented reality activities into all this to give experiential learning that the students need in order to, have to develop the competences and, uh, and skills they need. The idea of bring your own device, the meaning that uh, uh, having any device, should you should be able to learn and restore uh, learning in case you forget learning, is another approach we highlight because we don't believe that the future uh, will be um, uh, in the future we'll have really schools where the learning is done in the classroom in the way we do it today. The learning uh, should be available anytime, any place. It could be a video learning, could be many different approaches, or it could be all lectures of of today's teachers to be recorded somewhere. And the what what we believe. The student will be doing in the future in the learning environments or in the learning spaces. These are the these are this is the language we use for the future is to really uh, apply knowledge so they can develop uh, uh, competences and skills. So the knowledge should be uh, the students should be able to retrieve knowledge whenever they need it or whenever they forget it. If you have the scenario, for example, that you you taught something in October and then you use that what you taught in October, you use it in March, and the students come to you and say, teacher, I forgot, we forgot what you taught us in October. What are you going to do? You're going to teach them again? You don't have time. So you need solutions like this because these are happening every day in the schools. Students do not remember what they have been taught one year ago or even one week ago sometimes. So you need a system to retrieve knowledge and we have developed through projects already and we are implementing this in this uh, STEAM Academy uh, ways to, 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 to solve this. The problem is that some of these approaches have a cost and have a cost not only financial but have a cost in the policies of uh, education systems. And if the education systems are not ready to make the change, then they will, we will be losing the students. This is the issue. And uh, I believe that the solution will not come from top to down, down as far as the curricula and the educational system is going, to, is going to come from bottom up, from the students. The two students will impose to us the way they want to learn, and we have to adapt to them. And I can tell more about this, but I, I can stop here to say that um, uh, we, we need to change. Okay. Thank you, Gregory, and thank you for the final message. Yes, we need to change. So, uh, Achilles? Uh, I'll take it on from where Gregory left it. Yes, we need to change, uh, but we need to change in different um, layers of society, let's say, in different sectors also. Uh, teacher academies focus uh, mostly on educators, and of course we need uh, to help educators develop the necessary competencies um, and um, also the stakeholders, some immediate stakeholders. Uh, at the same time, uh, we need um, a change in a change of mind, let's say, in the way we are approaching education completely. Uh, and this involves the entire society. It's not only um, uh, educators who, of course, will be the pioneers and the agents of change at this uh, stage, but then we need also to educate the uh, policymakers, we need to educate the parents, we need to educate the society as a whole. Uh, for a new model of education that is not the traditional model where uh, in which children go to school, they uh, support road learning or even, I don't know, problem-based learning, whatever, but they are learning in a simulated environment, let's say, in a, in a, in a, in a um, ex, um, reclusive environment. Uh, so uh, if I understand uh, uh, what Gregory was saying, I think that uh, teacher academies are the seed so that the um, 
forest of STEM education will grow in the next years. We need to educate the society as a whole and we need to have patience because these kind of changes don't happen overnight. Uh, even if um, through COVID we had a forced uh, digital uh, uh, competence, uh, this is a transformation of society. <clears throat> this is not going to happen so easily with STEAM education. Uh, I would be uh, happy to see this happening bottom up. Uh, I think also that we need some uh, top down uh, measures to, to be applied uh, in order to, to achieve this change and to be patient, to allocate us the necessary time to move from this model to the new model. Thank you very much, Achilles, for keeping up with like the inspirational talk that Gregory started. So let's continue with Maria. Maria? Um, I, I agree with Achilles that we also need a, a top-down um, approach to change as well. And I'm going to start with a question, are the teacher academies sufficient to overcome the lack of STEAM education? And I think that um, the, the teacher academies are doing a, a great job and they're producing amazing products uh, that the teachers can use. They are educating the teachers as well, um, but this is not done in a systematic or a systemic way because it's only done in the partner countries with the specific teachers and it's mainly teachers that are interested in, uh, in, in getting this kind of, of information and this kind of training. But we need to have systemic changes on, on a local level in each one of the countries and on the European level as well and on the policy level, on the local policy level and the European policy level as well. And through my interaction with policymakers on European level during the last two years, I see that there is a drive to change and to, uh, to support STEAM and STEM education. But I don't see that happening on, on a local level or national level. And maybe there should be some more pressure on the European countries to do that as well. And I, I think this is also linked to um, the issue of assessment. Because if we continue assessing our students in the same way in which we were assessed 30 or 40 years ago, and we don't make any changes um, in the assessment to to be able to evaluate the competences of the students as well, then we're not going to see any um, very systematic changes coming there as well. So I'm, I'm positive that uh, change is coming. It's going to be slow, but um, I, I'm also sure that we need to have more pressure and more support from uh, the EU level to, able, to be able to make these changes in uh, the European countries as well. Many thanks, Maria. Many thanks to, to all three of you. I think you have uh, really touched like the core of the issue, the need for change, the persistence that is needed, the support from policy side, the need for change also on the assessment front. So all these core elements that they, they compose education, but they all need to be addressed one to one in order to, to bring uh, some sustainable uh, change. So in a discussion about change, it is impossible to to forget policy. The role of policy is very, very prominent, is very, very important, quite strong. So you have already mentioned some of you, some of the things uh, that you are doing within your academies in order to produce policy recommendations and to influence policy. But I would like to explore it a little bit more. So to give you the opportunity to tell us how are your initiatives actually influence the policy uh, landscape and also the, um, the curriculum. Um, Achilles, do you want to start? Yes, thank you. Uh, I totally agree with what Maria said before. I think she uh, she touched uh, uh, upon the policy the policy issues. Uh, what I wanted to say is that um, uh, um, teacher academies are a great start, uh, but they should not uh, end up as being an alibi for uh, you know we did something, we did what we could, and it didn't work out or whatever. Uh, we need a consistent support uh, by all levels of policy making, starting at the European level, but also going down at national levels and even at school levels, uh, if we want to, to implement uh, STEAM education uh, properly. And I'm saying again that uh, this will take time. And not only time, but also resources and uh, above all uh, uh, human resources. That is why in our project, uh, our main policy instrument, let's say, is the uh, SPICE Alliance that uh, we are going to form uh, starting uh, after uh, summer. 
uh, and in which we are trying to we will bring together the critical mass uh, of important um, stakeholders, of important players in STEM education landscape, trying to create a more permanent uh, structure that would push uh, towards the uh, implement the adoption and finally the implementation of uh, the proper implementation of, uh, of of STEM education. As I say again, we must be persistent. Uh, and uh, we shouldn't let the results achieved with teacher academies, which yes, now they are topical, they are not very well connected, but this will happen over the years. Now we have another round of new teacher academies. There will be some, I, I guess, some uh, umbrella uh, initiatives that will bring teacher academies together. I think also Gregory's initiative can function in this way, uh, so that uh, the momentum is not lost and all this investment is not wasted. Thank you very much, Achilles. Gregory? Yeah, uh, as I said previously, that the, the solution is going to be bottom up, and then I stop, I say I have more to say. Uh, I, I, I do expect the, the, the top down, but the top down solution will come um, provoked or, or implied through, through a bottom up. And let me give you the extreme scenario. Um, Imagine that uh, all students, all European students someday uh, have the right to do homeschooling. And imagine that 80% of the students uh, in Europe decide to do homeschooling. What will happen? If we are like we are today, most schools will close. The teachers will not lose their job because they have to develop the homeschooling support system. But what, what will be happening in schools if all students decide to do homeschooling? This is what I'm saying, that eventually someday, all students will be able to be learning through these digital devices, etc. And they will be getting this opportunity to do homeschooling much faster than they go when they go to school. So the student will say, why should I go six, seven hours in school when I can learn everything in two hours? while I'm sitting in, in my bedroom or while I am in the coffee shop, etc. Okay, I have answers about the, social, the socialization of students, but let's ask 100 students right now what that socialization means to them. And the majority will not say going into the classroom. The majority will say that using my smartphone, I can talk to 100 people at the same time, and this is better socialization to me than going into the classroom. These are the challenges we have to face with the development of technologies, and these are the challenges that we have to face with the change of society and the, the fact that some of us are not adapting to the change of the youth. Of the youth. So the, the top-up will come caused by the bottom-up uh, 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 demand, let me put it in this way. So we hope through our approach of the STEAM academies, which is uh, happening already, at least in the country of Cyprus, where the Pedagogical Institute, which is part of the Ministry of Education, has, uh, has, is, has put this uh, uh, first, uh, first uh, micro-credential development under its patronage. The Minister of Education of Cyprus will give hand-to-hand the first micro credentials for future STEAM teachers and the first STEAM Academy um, uh, re, uh, in Cyprus, for example, will be the Ministry of Education. So we hope that we see something happening, at least in a small country like Cyprus, because it's easy to bring changes in small countries. The, the education system of Cyprus has already developing afternoon STEM schools, in public schools I'm talking. So eventually we hope that in, in few years, and, and I agree with my colleagues that things are not changing, cannot change very fast, but we, we have to pave the way from now if we want to see changes in 10 years time. Uh, and we need to prepare the teachers, we need to prepare uh, the, the society also is another challenge. The parents, the parents need to understand uh, the different approaches of learning. They see it happening in their students, but they don't understand it. So these are the issues, and uh, we know the problem. We know some solutions. 
but change is not easy and it cannot be fast. So we hope we will be convincing people, uh, merging forces, all of us, who, who I hope we agree on most issues, and uh, we, we can uh, contribute to bring the change in the coming years, I hope. Thank you very much, Gregory. Very, very interesting. And also, we're looking forward to see how things are going to evolve in uh, in Cyprus. As you said, in small countries, sometimes change is a little bit easier to be implemented. Maria? Um, I can understand the argument of, uh, of a bottom-up change. And uh, based on my perspective, the only population that is ready for the change right now are the students. And I think they have been ready for quite some time now. So we have to listen to them. Uh, so in the ICSI Academy project, what we're trying to do in terms of policy is that we have, um, we also have what we call the national policy committees. So in each one of uh, the partner countries, we have small national policy committees, which work in two ways. One of the ways is that uh, we go to the national policy committees to understand their needs. And we did that from the beginning of the project. So we try to understand the needs of each individual country and the current situation in each one of the countries. And then um, they they are also invited when we have our round tables to discuss the issues and, and the findings that we have from our project as well. But my, my, my concern and my fear, and it has to do with my fear when it, about policy in general, is that information is communicated on, on a specific level and with a specific um, number of people, and it's not necessarily um, infused within the systems to to support uh, this change. Again, I, I am positive that we are seeing changes, but maybe we need to find a way to speed up the process of these changes because I see that we, we have started losing the students already. They're losing interest because the way that they're taught is not in the same pace with the way that they are um, um, communicating with the technologies that they have in their hands. Very, very interesting, Maria. Yes, you are absolutely right. So policy influence is key to sustainable change, whether that is bottom up or you know top, top down, I think, yeah, they're, they're both very, very, very important for uh, for change. We agree that we need to do things now in order to pave the way, and probably we're quite late with certain changes since we see in the different um, surveys here and there that uh, the motivation from students is uh, somewhere lost along the way, and the reality, the world they live in, does not come hand in hand with the way they're being uh, taught at the moment. So finally, um, we have uh, mentioned it already, so the importance of uh, assessment and also on how we measure effectiveness in general of this kind of uh, STEAM, uh, STEM uh, trainings, of this kind of, uh, of the different initiatives that uh, are being carried out within the different um, academies. So how do you guys measure the effectiveness of your different uh, activities, of your different resources, of your different uh, initiatives that you are uh, launching, and are there any any types of metrics that you are using in order to evaluate the, the impact to your direct stakeholders, whether those are teachers and also maybe impact to students as well, depending on the type of resources that you are uh, developing. Achilles, do you want to start? Well, uh, our uh, main target uh, group are the educators. So uh, our main, let's say, um, metric for success is the people who will participate in the training offers that we will offer, plus the people who will participate in the communities and in the uh, SPICE Alliance, that, uh, not only the people, but also the organizations in the SPICE Alliance that will be formed uh, uh, afterwards. Thank you, Achilles. Um, Maria? Um, in terms of the training programs that we do in the ICSI Academy, we have a, a pre and post test design in which uh, we ask the teachers to evaluate the program and uh, to provide any input on how to further improve it. But our target population are the teachers and not the students, so we, we don't have a design way within the project to measure any possible impact on student outcomes as well. One suggestion in, in the future would be 
to focus also on student self-efficacy, their knowledge and skills and attitudes as well when it comes to STEM, but it's not something that we're currently doing. Okay, thank you, Maria. And Gregory? Yeah, uh, in, in the process of the, um, of the training and the development of the uh, learning and creativity plans, we have developed a so-called evaluation rubric on how teachers can evaluate uh, students working in projects. And this, of course, has nothing to do with the test. There are different indicators there that we have trained teachers how to understand them and how to use them for measuring. And of course, they, they end up with numbers, but uh, they have to do it through a qualitative uh, approach. Uh, now, about um, indicators measuring impact uh, on students and of course on teachers, uh, through the uh, piloting we do now, we have developed uh, also some indicators to measure uh, and receive feedback from the students uh, to be used by teachers because whatever the teachers do, if they want to be effective in the methodology they use, they need the feedback from the students. And uh, without impact from the students, you can never be sure that what you are delivering to them uh, has a, a, a learning outcome as, at the end. So uh, what is important for the student is to, uh, for the students and, and the teachers, of course, is to make sure that these, these indicators include attitudes and collaborative uh, measures, communication skills, reporting ability, creativity elements, problem solving, ability to adapt to new technologies. And the most important for us ability for uh, for a student is to help them to make decisions. If they, if they are able to make decisions, it means they have all different abilities, critical thinking, et cetera, that we always talk about. All these things and all these uh, competences and skills in students, they have to go through the teachers. So if the teachers do not understand it, they cannot deliver it or they cannot facilitate uh, for the development by the students. And this is what we are trying to help teachers do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gregory. Thank you very much. Many thanks to our three panelists. Thank you for sharing uh, your experience and your, the work you are doing within the academies. It's very, very inspiring. You definitely have solutions that I hope that we can mainstream and we can bring more attention to via the work of the CR and the other um, projects. Uh, I have seen that there has been quite some uh, reactions when you guys have been talking, there have been cheers, there have been uh, comments, so I would love to open the floor for a couple of questions from the audience before we move on to our final um, discussion. So if there are any questions for our three uh, speakers, for Gregory, for Achilles or for Maria or for all three of them, please raise your hand and uh, don't forget to turn on your camera when I give you the floor. So are there any questions? Let's see. Yes, I see a hand. Yes, Sarah, please. Is there any scientific study you know that can be cited to show teachers who do not believe in STEM education that this kind of methodology is needed beside the traditional one? Is there anyone who wants to answer? The, as far as I know, there, there are many uh, research uh, uh, papers published already on uh, indicating that, for example, project-based learning uh, contributes to the development of competencies and skills of students. The idea of project-based learning go back, goes back 100 years. And uh, in those times, of course, you didn't have the technology and you didn't have the means in order to really bring this project-based learning activity in, into the school environment. But nowadays with the technologies and the flexibility of learning, uh, it is much possible, much easier to do than in the past. So research shows that uh, project-based learning can develop uh, competence and skills in students better than um, just reading a book, for example, listening to a lecture. So, um, this is what we believe, and this is what we are trying to bring into the education system. Thank you very much, Gregory. I hope, Sarah, that answered your question. Is there any other question for our panelists? Okay, so with this, we're going to move on to our last discussion. 
for today. So looking back to everything that you have heard during uh, the, the initial presentations and also during the um, roundtable discussion that we just uh, concluded, we would like to hear a little bit more about your experience with uh, STEAM tra training and conti continuous professional development. Uh, do you have uh, accessibility to uh, to courses? Do you find it easy to find um, courses of this kind of uh, of of this type? Um, do you also find the quality of those courses that it's quite high, that they're quite engaging, and all these kind of things? And also, since we have talked a lot about and we learn a lot about the academies um, today, have you enrolled to any of the activities of these academies? Not only the three that we had the opportunity to dive in today, but also as we heard. Earlier on, there are 24 more that they are quite um, active as well, and they are covering different dimensions and different uh, topics. So, as usual, raise your hand and don't forget to turn on your camera when I give you the, the floor. And also, don't forget to use the Padlet. We will have the opportunity to hear from two or three of you, but uh, our time is a little bit limited. So, is there anyone who wants to share their experience? I know we're at the end of a two hour session, so the energy levels are running low. I see Panayota. Panayota, please. Yes. I have participated uh, this semester in the ICSI Academy. Uh, I found it uh, uh, very useful. I would like to use it at least. Uh, I liked very much the ideas uh, on the cluster. Uh, I especially liked the one about the uh, computational thinking. Uh, it had also some uh, AR uh, apps, uh, escape rooms, digital escape rooms. They all uh, sounded uh, very innovative to me. It was uh, the first time that I thought something like that would be used uh, in teaching. I'm a mathematics teacher. Uh, I'm doing uh, my master in uh, National and Competition University of Athens. So that's the way I found ICSI Academy. Otherwise, I don't know if I would find it. Maybe. Uh, I found it very interesting. General. Thank you. Thank you very much, Panagiotta. Anyone else who wants to share their experience? Uh, also, when you tell us about your experience with material from these uh, academies, please also tell us whether um, this can be part of your CPD in your country. So, if is it officially recognized, or if it's something that you know it is assumed that you guys are doing in your spare on your own time, and you don't receive any credit for it. So, anyone else who wants to share their experience? Uh, Calypso, please go ahead. You can turn on your camera as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can see you. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. It was lovely being with you today. I'd like to thank Gregory for it was a wonderful opportunity for us as a um, Cyprus Pedagogical Institute to be part of STEAM Academy. Um, I am the part of Pedagogical Institute where has to do with the E of entrepreneurship. So uh, adding that but in STEAM empowers the, the um, empowers teachers and empowers also the, the huge project of uh, STEAM. Um, it gives more, gives a motive and a new way uh, to embrace entrepreneurial uh, spirit in all the subjects. So uh, developing uh, new material with Calypso, I think you're, you're muted. Profit. Yeah, you're muted somehow. Are we? Am I? Am I yes. okay now? No, Can you're you? okay now. Yes, yes, yes. All right, great. All right. I'd like to uh, thank you for today's seminar. And I also want to thank uh, Gregory for starting uh, all the initiative for the STEAM Academy. I'm the part of Cyprus Pedagogical Institute who uh, has to do with the E of STEAM Academy. So the entrepreneurial mindset that we're trying to uh, 
include and embellish this, uh, the, the teachers with. Um, who it may be since that it's not easy, but as soon as um, teachers are involved uh, and encourage a great, uh, encourages greatly the fact that uh, uh, the STEAM, the, the STEAM uh, Academy has. So uh, embracing entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is, um, is getting much more easier when you have to involve more and more people and from different uh, subjects. Uh, uh, it was a challenge that we tried today, uh, to this year to do, but as I'm a trainee, in, uh, I'm a teacher trainer, it seems that uh, it can be uh, developed and uh, developing also at the same time uh, material for that. Uh, it helps mostly the, the teachers to um, uh, to be part of the whole project as a project-based learning. So um, I can uh, I can see that is a big plus to learn and uh, and develop learning through uh, STEAM. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Calypso, for your input, but also for being here with us today. Thank you very much. And for the rest, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your presence, for your commitment. Many thanks to our panelists for all the work that you are uh, doing. Many thanks to this uh, community that emerges from this uh, seminar. So we're looking forward to uh, be in touch with you in the future to learn more about what you are doing and keep in touch so we can actually bring the change that our panelists so uh, lividly talked about. Many thanks to all. Have a nice afternoon. We'll see you soon. Bye bye, everyone.